Hey, what's up everybody? It's Jordan with Modular Head Shop. This is the first of many tech videos I'll be doing. Today, I'm going to cover how to properly degree your cams on a two-valve uh, modular engine. I'm also going to go over some myths um, as far as piston to valve clearance goes. I'm going to show you how to properly check piston to valve clearance, how to properly find top dead center. There's a couple different uh, methods that I use. And then we're going to go into some trick flow cam degree issues. So, this is my cam degree engine. We are in our cylinder head assembly room right now. And this engine's probably degreed, shoot, more than 500 sets of camshafts with really zero issues. So, um, everything is stock. It's got a stock deck, stock bore. I have a uh, stock head installed right now with stock valves. Uh, we never even knocked the guides out. We just cleaned the head a little bit. OEM head gasket. And we typically will have uh, one piston in number six here, one in number one. That's all we really need for the green camshafts. Those pistons typically have valve reliefs, but today uh, I have installed just a used set of Manly 18cc dish pistons. They do not have valve reliefs. Um, here is a close-up what they look like and so pretty much this engine will have you know all the same geometry as a stock long block and that's what I want to um, show y'all today is how tight the piston to valve clearance really is with some camshafts out there so first thing we're gonna do is find top dead center using the method of having a dial indicator mounted to the deck and measuring on either side of the piston. So, uh, you know, the reason for using a piston stop or any other tool of measuring on either side, uh, it's just like degreeing the camshaft, there's going to be a dwell point. And so you do not want to be measuring at that dwell point. So for that reason, um, if you're going to use this method, I would not try to get it at, say, within 20 thousandths of the top of the piston travel. It needs to be farther down. The farther away from the dwell, the more accurate the reading is going to be. Um, so the first step, we're going to measure um, within 100 thousandths of the tallest point of the piston on either side to find our top dead center. And then we will use the piston stop method. So I'm going to get a couple tools real quick and we'll get started. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is install my crankshaft socket. This is the crank socket that we offer in our camshaft degree kit. Has an adapter here for a degree wheel. And it also has a set screw here just to take out any slack. Now, it's pretty, fits pretty well, um, but there is a little bit of slack. And so what you wanna do is set the set screw, pull that out. Now what I'll typically do is push the socket in a clockwise direction every time. So if I have to remove it for something, say to maybe change the crank gear, um, then I know where I was at. Right. And it doesn't matter where the wheel is right now. I'll also note, this is what I'm using for a timing pointer today. Um, if you watch my cam degree video for Mustang Lifestyle on the GT500 build, this is what I use in my engine assembly room, which is in the other shop. It is nothing more than a timing cover bolt from one of the corners that has a stud on the end with a couple of nuts and a multi-tool for a paint gun. Never use this tool for anything other than cam degree, but um, I had seen somebody else use it at one point and you can buy them at a local hardware store. It's nice and sturdy and it will not move. So that's what we're using today. First step is going to be to mount my dial indicator near the number six piston. Number six and number one will come up to the top of the deck at the exact same time. So it doesn't matter which one you're using. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is just bring the piston as far up to the top of the deck as it will go. That's typically within 12 or 13 thousandths on a stock deck. And then we're gonna set our degree wheel to zero. And then we're gonna see how far off we are. All right, so I've already 
set my indicator pretty much to zero. I think it's about a thou off. All right. Right now we're at 30. So I'm going to loosen this up. And snug it up at zero. Now, what I want to do is I want to read 100 thousandths on either way of the piston and see what number we have. If our top dead center is correct, those numbers will be exactly the same. I'll go counterclockwise first. And I'm at 16 and a half, right between 16 and 17. All right, now clockwise, back to zero. All right, and here, I'm just about 18. So, that means we need to be about 17 and a quarter. There is absolutely no excuse without being pretty much dead on the money. This is something that you should not cut corners on. It's not going to be close enough. It needs to be as close as you can possibly get it. So don't rush this portion. All right. So we're going to go back just three quarters of a degree and just before 17. All right. Now let's see if it's the same on the other side. I certainly hope so. just past the 17 mark right here I would say that is right on the money all right so now you've already found top dead center using this method I would say this method is the easiest way to do it however make sure like I said we're measuring a hundred thousandths off the top of the farthest point of the piston I won't say at the top of the deck because the piston is not all the way to the top of the deck but yes you could do it off the top of the deck as well a hundred thousandths in the hole on each side. That is enough to get away from the dwell. The farther away you are from the dwell, the more accurate your reading is going to be. That goes um, for doing it with the piston stop method. All right, you're going to do the same thing pretty much. However, as you can see, I do not have a camshaft installed on this engine yet. I only have two valves installed on this engine. So if I did have the camshaft, I would just want to make sure both the valves are closed. There's a reasoning for this. And just like I said before, the farther away you are from the top of the piston, the farther away you are from the dwell, the more accurate your reading is gonna be. So I would prefer to have the piston stop hanging pretty far out to the port. You could easily do this with the camshafts installed on a four valve engine as long as the timing chains are set up and you're not gonna have any piston to valve issues. The issue with the PI head is, if you have the timing chain installed and you have a piston stop hanging out, you're going to have a collision with the valve and you could hurt the valve and you would probably never know it until you go to start the car and it's not holding. Alright, so for that reasoning, we have nothing installed. All the valves that are installed in this head are closed right now. Uh, my next step is going to be to install the piston stop, uh, I'm going to take all of this apart and we will start over. So there's two ways you can do it. You can do it to where you have the keyway at 10 o'clock. For those of you that don't know, approximately 10 o'clock for the keyway is top dead center. Then you can set your dial in, or your degree wheel to zero, just like we did on this side. See how far off you are. Or you can be at 9 o'clock and you can have it around 30 degrees. So you know, one, there's 12 hours on a clock hand, divide 360 by 12, and you're going to get 30. So you can go 30 before top dead center should be at 9 o'clock. And that's the method that I'm going to use because, again, we are farther away from the dwell point to get a more accurate reading. And once we do that, we will actually verify over here, and then I'm going to take this gauge off for the rest of it. All right, so I got my degree wheel set at 30 degrees. I've got my 
piston stop. Not as far as extended as it could be, but pretty darn close. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get our first reading and then see how far off we are. We are going to be a little bit uh, off from this number because, you know, 10 o'clock is a good reference for top dead center. However, it is not true top dead center. Top dead center is just a little bit past 10 o'clock. So at 9 o'clock, we're at 30. We'll go here clockwise. And we are at 28 and a half before we hit the piston stop. Now I'm going to go counterclockwise and see where we end up on the other side. All right. And here we're at 44 and a half. So just some simple math. We'll take 44 and a half plus 28 and a half. That's 73 divided by 2, 36 and a half. I'm going to loosen my degree wheel. We are going to go to 36 and a half. And hopefully, that's what we'll hit on the other side. All right now, we're going clockwise again. Top dead center is over this way. We got to go all the way back around. And I'm at 36 and a half degrees right on the money. That right there is a good accurate reading. We are so far away from the dwell of the piston that you know that the reading is accurate. Now just to verify that, you can come over here and see we are not even close. We are not even close to the dial indicator yet. All right, We are way off. Probably 5 eighths of an inch in the hole is where we are measuring either side of the top dead center. Um, now just to verify what we will do, so we'll go ahead and pull our piston stop out. Okay. And once we do that, we will check to make sure that top dead center on our degree wheel matches this. here. Go to zero. Looks like it barely moved. Okay. We'll go within a hundred thousandths. Looks like we are at 17. So we'll go a hundred thousandths this way. And we are at 17 and a half. So we will tweak that just a little bit. I do want to read this one more time though. I'm at 17 and a half. Make sure I didn't get a bad reading here. Okay, so our methods are half a degree off. I am actually going to go with my top dead center method here because we were measuring farther on the dwell. Um, we can try that here and see if we get a more accurate measurement this way. We are also going off the center of the piston whereas this is just one end of it. Um, it is on the pin center line. I would never recommend doing it on the thrust sides um, because they will rock and you will get a way different measurement. Um, but let's go a little bit farther and we'll see what the travel is set up here. We can go up to just about there. Okay. So right here we are about 23 and three quarter. Alright, so. And that was 200 thousandths in the hole. And here we are 24 and 3 quarter. I'm going to keep this over here. Nothing wrong with this method. However, I do feel this is more accurate. All right. 
Now what we're going to do is go over installing the camshaft, hooking up the timing chains and all this other stuff. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take this off for now. I'm going to keep my degree wheel on the crank socket. I'm just going to loosen the set screw so we can get going. All right. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and install our camshaft we're going to be using today. This is my stage 2.5 naturally aspirated cam. I'll go over some specs with you in a second. Um, but as you can see, we have the only two valves installed in this head and they're outfitted with our checker springs and our checker retainers. Checker retainers have a one inch OD and they have a little lit, uh, groove all the way around and that's going to keep your dial indicator uh, a little bit more steady. Just a factory follower and our adjustable lash adjuster. You do need an adjustable lash adjuster. It cannot be hydraulic and it should not be solid either because you will get false readings. Got a little bit of this high pressure lube in here just so it's not running all over the place and we're not hurting the camshaft. All right, now next is going to be putting on our timing chain. So before we do that, I'm going to set up my dial indicator. And then I'm going to show you all how to properly set up your adjustable lash adjuster. So you're going to get a good accurate reading. I've already got my magnetic base adapter screwed in. It's one of the valve cover bolts, bolt holes. Alright, so I'm just going to set my dial indicator up here. Alright, so these are our stage 2.5 naturally aspirated camshafts. They have a 226 uh, duration at 50 on the intake, and the intake is our only concern today. Uh, the intake valve uh, causes all the piston to valve issues with the two valve PI engine. Now the stock intake valve has a very, very thick margin and the margin is the, the bottom of the valve that's kind of um, parallel or per, yeah, parallel to the valve stem. So here you can see this is a stock two valve PI valve. All right, this portion here is the margin. So this margin here is somewhere around 95 to 100 thousandths thick. A typical performance valve is 50 to 60. So this, this does not help the piston to valve issues. Now also, one thing to note is that it does not matter what pistons you have. I talk to people every single day and they say, oh I got this dish piston. I don't care if the piston has a 60cc dish you are not going to gain any piston to valve clearance. The only way you're going to gain piston to valve clearance is to retard the camshaft, which takes your intake opening point and retards it, or modify the intake valve or have valve relief. So there's a limit for everything. We used to do this modified intake valve where we would trim that down to a standard 50 or 60 thousandths margin. 
It's extremely time consuming. I don't have the time to do that anymore. Uh, I may do a video on that later on, showing y'all at home how to do it, uh, or if you have a friend that has a lathe, it can easily be done. Now, here's the myth with the pistons. 18cc dish piston, all right? Piston with valve reliefs. You can see the valve relief is needed right on the crown of the piston, okay? Right on the crown. So it doesn't matter if this was a 50cc dish or a complete flat top. The dish is not helping you at all. All right. Another thing to note, certain pistons should not have valve reliefs added to them. It affects the top ring groove. For instance, this is a manly piston. All right. Now I don't use manly pistons very much. I do use manly rods a lot and I use manly valves. Manly makes very good products. However, for the two valve, this is not the best piston to use. All right. And there's a reason why Manly does it this way. Manly does not have a ton of part numbers, but they almost always have that part number in stock. They're not going to have a two valve and a four valve version of the same piston. This is what you get. They're almost always in stock. All right. So let's go over this. 220 thousandths top ring land. It's reading 217. I know it's 220. All right. Now. to 80 top ring land. All right. Now the valve relief slightly affects the ring land just a little bit. All right. So now we're down to 202. That's 80 thousandths out of here. Doesn't seem like a lot, but it was 280 thousandths to begin with. Take 80 thousandths out of here. Now you have 120 thousandths down top ring land. Not good for boost. Want to know why everybody's stuff blows up? Stupid stuff like this. So I've always said the same thing for years. That the, you know, the largest cam I would recommend on a completely stock long block would have an opening time of two and a half degrees before top dead center at fifty thousandths of lift. All right. So how do you calculate that number? It's very very simple. You're going to take the duration at fifty, divide that in half. And then you're going to subtract from the intake center line. So for instance, my stage two camshaft used to be a 225 intake duration. It's now a 224. We'll just go 224 because that's simple. So 224 divided by two is 112. We use an intake center line of 110. That opens two degrees before top dead center at 50 thousandths of lift. This is my stage 2.5 naturally aspirated cam. I do recommend having um, that or aftermarket or modified intake valves with this camshaft. It is the largest one that I would ever recommend without having valve reliefs. All right, and you will see why shortly. This has a 228 duration at 50 on the intake, 230 on the exhaust, and so it has an opening point of four degrees before top dead center at 50 thousandths of lift. Anything larger than this, when properly installed, you are going to be too close for piston to valve clearance. There's just no, there's no argument there. I would say 90% of the aftermarket two valve camshafts that are installed in engines that do not have valve reliefs are too tight. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put the timing chain on. I've actually retarded this trip flow sprocket four degrees already because I already degreed this camshaft. This camshaft came in uh, somewhere around 108 and it was already hitting. So we are going to set this up how it would be on a 112 intake center line and that would give us an opening point of two degrees before top dead center instead of the four degrees like it would be when it normally is. Then we'll go and we'll set it up how it should be degreed and then we'll advance it a little bit more and I will show y'all exactly what happens here. Okay. All right. So another thing to note, and I've went over this in uh, the assembly video with Mustang Lifestyle, but I did not go over here. I'm a nine o'clock fan. I like to keep the keyway at nine o'clock. Um, 
I'll do that when installing cylinder heads and I'll do that when installing camshafts and what that does is it ensures that all the pistons are safely up under the deck you can turn the camshaft 360 degrees if you're snugging up the camshaft and that particular lobe is down you're not going to bend the valve I mean I hear it all I hear everybody's disaster story guys get brand new heads they're in a hurry you know they put the camshaft on or they you know some of them we send the camshafts out installed like this and the have a valve open they didn't even check go start torquing it down boom bend a valve so nine o'clock's a good spot to be it is a little bit more finicky sometimes lining the chain up in final assembly but you'll know that you're not going to bend a valve all right so next thing is i use um, tensioners a lot just the standard tensioners to degree camshafts and I really don't see an uh, issue with it some of y'all may have seen this method before this is what we are using today and it's really just because of time if you're making a lot of adjustments this is a much easier way than collapsing the tensioner every time and it keeps constant tension on the chain and while it looks kind of stupid it works pretty darn well took my uh, degree wheel off before when I first Put it on. I talked about having it, you know, going in the count in the clockwise direction. So we are going to do that as well. Snug up the set screw. Okay. And now we are good to get our first few readings. So one thing I forgot to do earlier was go over setting the preload on the lash adjuster we can go over that right now we'll go ahead and loosen it up all right so what we want is we don't want the follower being able to wiggle right right now it's wiggling we also don't want to have false preload so the best thing to do is loosen it up to where the follower is kind of floating there and we're just going to tighten it up until we see a thou or two of preload. As you can see, as soon as my dial indicator starts moving, boom, zero lash, that's good. All right. The first thing we're going to find is max lift. That is going to be your center line. That is the same thing that we measured over here with the number six piston. All right. So, go around, find our max lift. Now for those of y'all at home, one thing to note here is that you can see this camshaft is 575 lift, all right? We don't have much travel left. So you kind of want to guess how much travel. If you're degreeing a camshaft that has 550, 575 lift, make sure that you preload it at least 600 thousandths. That way when you get to the bottom, you're not missing it. I, I hear guys do that all the time or they'll call me, hey man, I'm having this problem where like, you know, I'm getting this weird number, and it, it's nothing more than uh, the dial indicator ran out of travel one way or another. So, all right, so once we get to this, we're going to move this to zero. All right. And these things are a little bit finicky, so you want to make sure you get a good reading. Take your time. All right. Now, we are going to be using the intake center line method. This is 50 thousandths before and 50 thousandths on either side of max lift. However, the engine only spins in a clockwise manner, so when I go back, I'm not going to read my first 50 going back this way. I'm going to go 150 and then come back to the first 50. That ensures I have the correct preload and the correct direction on my timing chain. All right? So. We're going to go back to 50. This is where I'm going to get my reading from. Another hundred thousandths. All right. And then we'll go clockwise. Okay. So my first number is 81. And my second number is 142. 
All right. So how do you find your current intake center line? We take our first no first number, 81 plus 142. That's 223. Divide that by 2, and I'm at 111 and a half. So with four degrees of retard here, I'm at 111 and a half. If I was on a stock sprocket right now, I would be at 107 and a half. All right? Advancing the intake makes your number smaller. Retarding the intake makes your number larger. It is the opposite for the exhaust. And you will see that once we get to the trick flow stuff. All right? So we're at 111 and a half here. And our camshaft card calls for 110, we need to move to an even number. Once we get to an even number, we'll be able to adjust our crankshaft gears. And at that point, we'll be able to get exactly to a 110. So, I will show you what needs to be done here. Half a degree movement is very, very simple. There's enough uh, slop in the factory sprocket to obtain that without having to do anything else. All right, so previously I just had this bolt snug, just snug, and so that's what I'm going to do again. I'm just going to unsnug it, and we are going to adjust this camshaft. So it all comes down to camshaft versus crankshaft relation. If you're advancing the camshaft with the cam crankshaft static, the camshaft would move clockwise. To retard the camshaft with the crankshaft staying static, the camshaft would move counterclockwise. So we're looking for literally half a degree. This is going, going to be extremely simple. All right, got a little hex key here. I'm just going to loosen this just slightly. And just with the pressure of the crankshaft holding this, we don't need much, we need half a degree. I'm going to pull the camshaft counterclockwise, just slightly. So we had 111 and a half before. We are definitely going to have a higher number this time. All right. We'll go back. Make sure we're good at our max lift. We are. All right. And remember, we're going back 150 thousandths the first time. Right, we're at 81 and a half. That's only half of a degree off from last time. That's promising. I'm trying to get to 112. 81 and a half. Forty-three. I don't think we're quite there. All right, we're at one twelve and a quarter. Most guys would say that's good enough. I probably could for the video, but I'm going to get it just a little bit closer. We're going to get it right to one twelve. All right. So, same thing. This comes in handy because it gives me something to rest the. Uh, breaker bar for my crank socket too. Right, I'm just going to barely move, boom, just I barely, barely move the crankshaft clockwise and we will come back and get one more reading here. just on the other side of 81. I'd say that's about 80, 81 and a quarter. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. All right. And I'm at 141 and three quarter. Just 
Still not there. Get another ring in here. All right, so I'm back to 111 and a half. Not really what I wanted, um, but that's the part of cam degree. We're going to keep going. We are going to retard it just slightly again until we have exactly 112. Now, like I said before, quarter of a degree is good enough, but you can get it, you know, closer, and that's what I'm going to do today. So. All right, we're at 81 and a half. And we are at 142 and a half. Boom, 224, 112 exactly. That's what I was looking for. We're gonna take a couple minute break and then when we come back, we're gonna go over how to check your piston to valve clearance. And I think a lot of y'all are going to be mind blown at how tight this really is. So we'll be right back. Alright, so before I show you how to properly check piston to valve clearance, I want to mention that the best way to do it is with the checker spring and compressing that checker spring. Um, the clay method does work, but it, you don't know at what point, you know, your tightest is. So we're going to be able to see what our piston to valve clearance is over a range, okay? We will start at 10 degrees before top dead center. We will go all the way to 15 degrees after top dead center. I can tell you from experience, it's gonna be the tightest five degrees, between five degrees and 10 degrees after top dead center. Uh, Excuse me, so. <clears throat> All right. One of the myths is that I'll, I'll constantly, constantly get guys calling and they're like, oh yeah, you know, for some high lift cams. The lift doesn't have hardly anything to do with it. It is your duration. Your duration and your opening time of the valve. So here's how it is. One thing I wanted to incorporate in this cam degree video was the dwell. Dwell, dwell, dwell. All right. So here's how it works. We measure duration at 50 thousandths of lift. That's where the air starts to get moving. But in reality, there are other durations to measure. Duration at two, duration at six. Your duration at six is what most people go on at advertised duration. Like a Comp 270. Definitely doesn't fit. Uh, but that advertised duration is 270 at six, not 50. All right? So, the valve is all, intake valve is already starting to open as the piston is still coming up, all right? And as the camshaft lobe is really getting on its ramp, so where it's going to start accelerating its opening point, is when the piston is still dwelling at the top. And what you have now is the piston is starting to go down, but the intake valve is chasing it faster. That is why you will see a lot of guys running camshafts that are too large, yet they never bend the valves because the valve is chasing the piston and they're encouraging rock in the piston, they're probably hurting the rod bearing a little bit, and they're also hurting the lash adjusters, all right? So we will go over the lash adjuster thing a little bit later, but typically your lash adjusters are set up to be preloaded about 20 thousandths before they bottom out. So a 20 thousandths interference will pretty much keep you from breaking anything uh, after that, you're going to break the head off the valve. Alright, 
So, now that we've kind of gone over, and I hope that everybody can understand that the, the valve is chasing the piston, and that is why the lift doesn't matter. We're not even close to max lift when we're having piston to valve interference issues. All right, so what did we say before? This is camshaft's a 228 duration at 50. It should open four degrees before top dead center. And we are going to check that first. And then we are going to check the piston to valve clearance. So we are on the base circle right now. Now, years ago, every now and then, from a certain cam company, I'm not gonna, I'm not into brand bashing or whatever, but we would see camshafts come in with run out on the base circle. You do not want that. So if you are to bring your camshafts and you're on the base circle and you see your gauge wobbling around when you know it's on the base circle, I would double check and then I would be calling the camshaft manufacturer and just say, hey, can we send you this camshaft back? It seems to have some run out on the base circle. All right, that is not good. Makes the valve train extremely unstable. So, we're getting close to our ramp. We're at zero here. I'm going to go ahead and set this to zero on the base circle. Alright. And we are going to go all the way to 50. And then we're going to read our degree wheel. Oh, 50 thousandths of lift there. Alright. And I'm at about one and a half degrees right here. Okay. So not exactly two. We're actually opening half of a degree later, and that's fine. That's perfectly fine. You can also degree your camshaft using this method, although I do prefer the intake centerline method. Alright. And so let's go back a little bit. We're gonna go back. And I want to keep going in the right direction as well. We'll go to 10 degrees before top dead center. All right. Then the next thing I'm going to do is just take my screwdriver here and we're going to check piston to valve clearance. Now, right now, my dial indicator is reading 81. Wherever it bottoms out, we're going to take the difference from there. All right. We actually went all the way around and back to 50. All right. And I'm going to record all these numbers. So at 10 before top dead center, all right, we had 131 thousandths. Now we're going to go to 8. We're at 75. Just past 75 again. And we're back to 65. All right, so within two degrees, we've already lost 21 thousandths of piston to valve clearance. You're going to see this number get tighter and tighter and tighter, and it's not going to be in a respectable uh, multiplier. It's going, to, it's going to increase its acceleration. All right, so next one, six degrees before top dead center. We are at 70 thousandths here on my gauge. And we did make it back around. We are at 77. That's 93 thousandths. All right. Next, we're going to go to four. And I'm sorry, I know this is tedious, but it needs to be shown. I'm just pressing down on the follower. We are at 63 and we made it back around to 85. Should be 78. All right. Now to two. This is supposed to be our opening time at 50. We're at 55, and we made it back around to 90. So 
and we're down to 65 thousandths. of clearance. Right, top dead center. All right. We're at 46 on my gauge. And we made it past zero to 93. All right. So 746. 53. All right. Now we're going to really start accelerating here. Two degrees after top dead center. Gauge is at 37. And here we are at 93. Move to four degrees after. We're at 27 and 90. That's 37 thousandths. Six after. We are at 17 and 85. That's 32. So we're getting pretty tight here. All right. And eight degrees. We are at four on the gauge. And it's going down to 76. So that's 30 thousandths. And 10. We're at 92 on the gauge. And we are making our way all the way down to 65. Twenty-seven thousandths piston to valve clearance with a solid adjustable lash adjuster with one thousandths of preload. That right there is the honest truth of how tight these engines are ran. All right, that is with opening at two degrees before top dead center with a factory valve. So, if you're trying to do that with a high tech stage 2 cam or a comp cams 270 or all these other camshafts that are out there for sale for $300 a set, they're for sale for $300 a set for a reason. And in all honesty, if you're one of the guys that are selling these camshafts because you bent your valves and you're not telling the next people that they need to have valve reliefs, you're part of the problem too. These engines are extremely tight. And this just proves my theory. You do not need to get any tighter than that. Push rod guys would crap their pants at 30 thousandths of piston to valve. However, these engines are very reliable running that tight, but you don't want to get much tighter than that. Any little problem with a valve spring, any lofting situations where you're lofting the valve and you're allowing the lash adjuster to lose its preload and fill up with oil better, you are going to have a problem, I promise you talk to people every single day that have problems with bent valves and improper camshafts are the problem and most of the time they want to get the biggest camshaft for this noise that they make when it really wouldn't fit their application to begin with and this just proves that all right so what I want to do now is I'm going to advance it another two degrees and we're going to show you what the difference would be opening at zero. All right, so we'll get this torn down and we'll be right back. All right, so after I've written all my stuff down, um, the tightest point was 10 degrees after top dead center 
and that was 27 thousandths. That was with an opening point of 2 degrees before top dead center at 50 thousandths of lift. That is what would be my stage 2 naturally aspirated camshaft. My camshaft that I have said for years and I've never changed this is the largest camshaft that I would ever recommend with a stock long block. Stock everything. Stock intake valves. No valve reliefs on the piston. All right. Now what we're going to do is that that to get that we had to retard this four degrees. All right. So this um, this was this was retarded four degrees to a one twelve intake center line. One twelve intake center line, but four degrees retarded at the bottom. Okay. So naturally it would be a one o eight. Now what we're going to do is only retard this gear 2 degrees and that will give us an intake center line of 110 which will give us an opening point of 4 degrees before top dead center. All right, And I'll show you here. These are the trick flow adjustable crank gears. This is probably one that got messed up. Something broke when we were pinning it together. All right, But it has 9 keyway slots. 0. 2468 retard in advance respectfully and then corresponding chain teeth at the bottom. If you get our cam degree service we will pin these gears together and then all you'll be able to see is the gear for the right hand side but these will always be right behind each other for you know the left bank. All right, Let's go ahead and get my tiny chain set up. direction. Right. First I want to verify that we are on a 110 intake center line. Right. So we'll go find our, our max again real quick. Okay. And before, there's our 50 we need to go to. We're going to go back 150. Right. First number is 79. Next number, 141, on the money. That's 220, that gives us a 110 intake center line. So we know that whatever adjustments we made with the crankshaft sprockets are right. I would say these things are so accurate, you do not need to double check them. They are almost perfect every single time. Um, we do double check them, but uh, I really have never seen, a, seen an issue. I will say one thing though, we degree a ton of comp cams and they are notorious for being four degrees too far advanced. Okay? So just for instance, I believe the uh, Comp Cams 270 is a good sounding camshaft. So a lot of guys buy them because uh, you know, they sound pretty darn good. However, two, I believe it's a 234 intake duration at 50. So half of that's 117 and on a 109. That's an opening point of eight degrees before top dead center. That's if it's degreed properly. If you just threw it in and it happened to be 4 degrees advanced, you're opening at 12 degrees before top dead center. As y'all can see here, you are way into the valve with the piston or vice versa. So, we will see here how tight it is at just an opening point of 4 degrees before top dead center. I'm going to go back here. 
set this to zero on the base circle. All right, so we're at 10 degrees before top dead center. That's where we're going to take our first piston to valve uh, measurement from. All right, my gauge right now is sitting at 75, so we're just going to read the difference. And we were able to go all the way past 75 and back to 50. It's 125 thousandths. So we've lost about 6 thousandths by advancing 2 degrees not too shabby at this point. Alright. Well, we're going to go to 8. My gauge is at 69. And we went all the way back to 66. 103. That's a 7 thousandths difference from the last one. All right. Six. We are at 62. And we made it to 75. So we're consistently about six, six thousandths tighter. Two thousands. We are at 36 on the gauge, and we are at 94. Five on our gauge and ninety four. Thirty one thousandths in comparison to forty four thousandths, just from two degrees difference. All right, we'll go four degrees after top dead center. My gauge is at fourteen. Ninety-one. Fourteen and nine is twenty-three. Twenty-three thousandths here in comparison to thirty-seven. Right. Now we're at six after top dead center. My gauge is reading three thou. And we made it to eighty-three. So already really tight here. All right, twenty thousandths clearance in comparison to thirty-two at the same. Four, eight. 
My gauge is at 90. And 74. 16 thousandths of clearance. All right, now we're going to go to 10. We're at 80 here and 64. So I think this is going to be our tightest part. Typically it will dwell there for a little while as the piston is starting to get moving. Okay. Um, I'm going to go actually all the way. I did a few more. I went all the way to 16 degrees on the last, or yeah, 16 degrees on the last one. So I'm going to do that here just to see where it starts to get just where it starts to gain clearance we're at 12 degrees after top dead center here my gauge is at 66 and we made it to 48 it's going back up right now just slightly that's 18,000 clearance all right and 14 We are at 53, and we made it to 30. So we're going back up here. So 23 thousandths. All right, so let's see. Our tightest port part here was both at 10 degrees after top dead center, 27 here, and 16 here. So we lost 11 thousandths total. with two degrees of advance. All right. This just shows you this is already too tight. This engine, there's no way the valves are not going to hit the piston. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> I will stick with my original saying 225 intake duration at 50, you know, on a 110 intake center line, opening the valve at two and a half degrees before top dead center at 50 thousandths of lift is going to be the earliest that I would open it with a completely stock gong block. All right, that's it for the two valve PI cam degree and piston to valve uh, clearance issues. I hope I've, um, you know, shed some insight on how tight these things really are and uh, what cams you should and shouldn't be running in your engine. Um, one thing to note is that I see a lot of guys running camshafts just for the sound bite. That's not really good. Um, you know, this is a tool to make power, not a tool to make noise. Uh, if you want that, get a good stereo. <laughs> um, the only way to get the chop sound is from overlap, and that's either by tightening up the lobe separation angle and or adding duration. Um, you know, you're not going to get an awesome driving two valve PI car uh, with a stock ECU and so also you want to make sure that your camshaft is going to fit in the usable RPM range that you have. Your RPM range could be limited from anything. Um, on the two valve PI it could be stock rods. I wouldn't spin the stock short block past 6500. A good way to ensure that is to keep the stock PI intake manifold on it. Um, that will some pretty much stall around 64, 6500 RPM from what I've seen, and that helps keep the RPM down. Um, but I wouldn't put monster camshafts, uh, even if you do have the right piston to valve clearance with a notched piston, uh, I still would not put camshafts in a motor that are capable of turning 8500 RPM when we all know that the factory ECU cannot support much over 7000 RPM. Um, that, like I said, that's it with the two valve PI. Now we're going to strap a trip flow head on here and we're going to do some trip flow cam degree. I'm going to show you exactly why half the trip flow headed engines in, the, in this country still are running the wrong camshafts. All right, we're back. I got my trip flow head loaded up. Got a trip flow specific camshaft. So, for those of you that do not know, the trip flow head has the same valve angle on the exhaust as the PI, but on the intake, it has been swapped. 
It's a much wider, much shorter port. And the intake valve is actually at the same angle as say like a small block Ford, okay? Where the valve relief is towards the intake side. So I have got a lot of phone calls about that as well. I didn't really go over that in the PI thing. Your valve reliefs are on the outside, right? Just under the exhaust port. A lot of guys that have built small blocks before and then they go do their first modular. I've seen plenty of guys put the valve reliefs in the wrong location, all right? So the tray full head really doesn't need valve reliefs. You can run cams in the 250 duration before you're even getting close. And I say 250 duration at 50,000 slift, all right? Um, but the issue is that since the intake valve is now, you know, they used to both be like this. Now the intake valve's this way, the camshaft is contacting the follower at a different you know at, at a different part of the ramp so so that difference in valve angle needs to be accounted for for when the camshaft is ground now for instance if you buy a uh, trip flow uh, top end kit from summit it's going to come with trick flow heads it's going to come with a set of trick flow branded camshafts however they're nothing more than the same camshafts they're selling you for pi heads and today I'm going to prove to you why those are not good. All right. So a little bit different than the last setup. It almost looks like I'm doing four valves. Most guys never check the exhaust center lines. And that is why most guys have the wrong camshaft in the trick flow head motor. All right. All right. So I've got my camshaft installed, my timing chains lined up, degree wheels installed, all that. These are my stage four naturally aspirated camshafts and they are trick flow specific. Now what makes them trick flow specific is the intake lobe has been moved to contact the follower at the correct position since the intake valve location has been moved. On a typical PI head, both the intake and exhaust valves are sitting at an angle like this. This head, the intake valve has been moved like this. I don't know if you can see, all right? Mm -hmm. So the follower and the lash adjusters are not in line. They're actually 180 from each other inside the cylinder head. And for that reason, the intake lobe needs to be moved. Now, this is my stage four naturally aspirated camshaft. It has a 236 intake, 238 exhaust duration at 50 thousandths of lift, 111 and a half lobe step angle, and it has a, fat, or a degree and a half of advanced ground into it. So we should, when degreed properly, see a 110 intake center line and a 113 exhaust center line. Um, I have already degreed this camshaft. I degreed it the other day. It is on a 110. We will just go over and verify that and then we will show you how to check the exhaust center line. After that, we will talk about what happens when you run a PI camshaft on a trick flow head and how it changes your lobe separation angle. All right. Get our peak. All right, I'm at seventy six. And 144, that puts us at 220. That's a 110 intake center line. Now for the exhaust. And our peak, come back. I got 143 for my first. And 83 for my second. 143. I don't even know where my phone is. 143 plus 83 is 226. So we're at a 113 uh, exhaust center line. So one thing to note is that the exhaust, when you're degreeing, um, 
and checking the exhaust center line, you're going to get the larger number first. Sometimes that kind of confuses people. Now, for the difference in valve angle, if we can come over here, as you can see, what used to be a lash adjuster and a lash adjuster, all right, is now a lash adjuster and a valve. So that is what changes, and that is why the geometry of the intake globe needs to be changed to accommodate that. If you do not, you will degree, if you're degreeing off the intake, your exhaust center line will not match the cam card. I can guarantee you. Um, and we're actually going to show you that next. We are going to put a PI cam in here, and then we're going to go to this side and see how far off it is. Now, here's what I want to explain as far as the difference in valve angle. Although the trick flow heads really don't need valve release until you get up into the 250, mid 250s for duration, um, I wouldn't even consider getting valve release, but a lot of the piston manufacturers will put them on. So this would be on the driver's side bank, but here's a two valve PI, okay? And here's a two valve TFS. You can tell the intake valve, you know, was here and now it's over here. That is a drastic difference. So, I'm going to get this torn down. We're going to put a PI cylinder or a PI camshaft on here now. And we are going to degree it and we are going to see if the valve events match the cam cart and how far off they are. We'll be right back. All right, so I have some PI camshafts installed uh, now. These are my stage 2.5 blower cams. Uh, they have a 115 lobe separation angle, and these were already degreed and they're marked R2. They came in at an intake center line up 108 instead of 110. So they had seven degrees of advance, um, not really seven degrees of advance. They were seven degrees advanced from the lobe separation angle. They have five degrees of advance ground into them. So on a 108 um, intake center line, that would put my exhaust center line at 122. Now, the intake center line um, is not going to be the same from the PI head to the trick flow head. So what we are going to do is we are going to see where this comes out and then figure out mathematically with the advertised lobe separation angle from the cam card where it should be. All right. So. Max lift. Alright. Good. Yep. Alright. Alright. I am at seventy nine. And 143. All right, that's 111. So, 111 intake center line. And now we're going to check the exhaust. Now, if you have a 111 intake center line on a 115 lobe separation angle, then that is four degrees advanced. All right, so we should have a 119 exhaust center line on a PI head. That is not what we're going to get here, but I'm just going to show you what the difference is. Mathematically, it should be one, uh, 119, I'm sorry. If I said 109, I meant 119. Got 155 for my first number. And 89 for my second number. That's 244. That's 122. So we're three degrees. We're three degrees off of what this came in on a PI head 
and then we're three degrees off what it should be at this intake center line. So we are way, way, way off, all right? Um, and it's only gonna get worse when we get to this side. So we are gonna get the same camshaft grind. We're gonna put it over here. We're gonna see what the intake center line is, and then we're gonna see what the exhaust center line is. And uh, a lot of guys are going to be surprised how far off your valve events are and there is no way that your tuner does not see this when they're logging the fuel trims. Your compression, uh, your cranking compression, and everything is going to be off. There is no way around that. You will not be able to get the same valve events bank to bank with a standard PI camshaft using trick flow heads. All right, we're back. I got the head swapped over to the driver's side. I got the driver's side camshaft installed. So this is this uh, matching camshaft to the PI cam we just had on the trick flow head on the passenger side. Um, this one came in on a 112 intake center line when it was degreed on the PI head. So let's see how it compares on the trick flow. We zero my gauges. They were the same ones we used on the other side. good. All right, first number is going to be 75 and a half. And the second is going to be 139 and a half. So it's 215, 107 and a half. So this came in at 112, all right? 112 with the PI head, it needed to be advanced two degrees. Now it needs to be retarded two and a half to get to the correct intake center line. So that is a four and a half degree difference. That is major. All right, and that is just on the intake portion. So, if we're on a 115 lobe step angle, okay, and we come in with a camshaft, we get a 107 intake center line. That's advanced seven and a half degrees. So on the exhaust, mathematically, we would expect to get 122 and a half. Okay, so let's see what we get. Just past 152, we'll call that 152 and a quarter. And 87. One nineteen and five eighths. So one nineteen. So we're not even close. We are not even close to what it should be. It should have seven and a half degrees of advance, and instead it has four and five eighths. This is the exact reason why, if you're going to run trick flow heads, you need to have camshafts that are made specifically for trick flow heads. I don't care if they came from a trick flow top end kit, unless you can verify that the exhaust center line matches the intake center line on the cam card, they are not fit for uh, trick flow head. You will have bank to bank issues. Cylinder pressure issues, fuel trim issues all around, not good news. All right. We do the same exact camshaft lobes. They are available for trick flow heads. We can degree them for you right here on this engine. Um, and we have done that for hundreds of people. And I can promise you, it is more accurate for me to do it on this engine than it is for you to do it in your car at home. Um, this is going to conclude my two valve cam degree video. 
If anybody has any questions, please comment below. I will be taking a break from doing major builds for a little while. I'm going to do more tech videos because there is information like this that needs to get out there. There is too much bad information out there from people that are not working on these engines day in and day out like we are here. Um, I feel like we have uh, gotten a ton of data in the last few years um, just through everything. There's so many experiments I want to do. So if you like what I'm doing, support the channel, like and subscribe. Um, you can buy our t-shirts and our hat right off the website and uh, you can go check out all the parts on the website. We have so many detailed products on the website, it's ridiculous. So I appreciate you watching.